Hi everyone, welcome to the next in our series of St Luke's and St Paul's Church at Home videos. My name is Reverend Matt Malins, Vicar of St Luke's and St Paul's. It's great to have you joining with us today for worship. We're going to start with our usual practice of celebrating birthdays and I have two that I know of to celebrate. The first one is for Marius or Maz. This were birthday biscuits coming your way. Happy 21st birthday. The second one is for Shelley Harrison from St Paul's. Shelley, happy birthday to you. Awesome. We're going to be hearing today later from myself about loneliness because we're continuing our sermon series looking at COVID and how lockdown is affecting us as individuals and as a church. And I'm going to be talking about that. Um, so please uh, have your Bibles ready as we'll be looking at Luke chapter 2 together. But let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we worship today, fill us with your spirit and your love. Help us to feel your presence with us. Help us to be united as a church with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I'm going to hand over to our worship team to lead us in some songs. No. 
Good morning. This morning's reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and caught uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as their chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we are looking at loneliness. And the first thing I need to do is apologise because everything else I've pre-recorded today, I've been saying that our reading's from Luke chapter 2. It's not. It's from Ephesians. So thank you for that reading and for getting the right reading because uh, I've just... I don't know what my brain was thinking, if I'm honest. But we are looking, for, looking at loneliness, and I think loneliness is possibly one of the hardest things about the virus um, and how it has affected all of us. Um, it's very difficult, isn't it, to be alone? And I want to look at it um, in terms of how do we respond to the challenges of loneliness as Christians, but also as a church united together. Um, but... I don't know why, there's a Celine Dion song um, called All By Myself, um, and that sprang straight to my mind when I was thinking about loneliness. Um, but I don't know why, because there's something wrong in my mind, because whenever I get to that really high note at the end of uh, All By Myself, um, I want to break into You Chose the Cross by Martin Lazelle. And I don't know what's happened in my mind to link those two together, um, but it has. And there, there is no rhyme or reason to it. Um, but being all by ourselves, as that Celine Dion song says, is so tough, isn't it, and difficult. Um, because it's isolation, and dealing with isolation is so hard and painful for us all. And actually, um, isolation is often used as a form of punishment, isn't it? Um, if you're, I don't know actually if it's still a practice now, but if you're in jail, um, that's always portrayed as being the worst, is you get put into isolation. Um, but actually, as a child, I remember that my mum and my dad used to use isolation as a punishment for me and my brother, um, with differing effects, actually, because what would happen if we misbehaved, we would get sent to our rooms. And uh, for my brother, it was the worst punishment ever. He could not stand it. He did, did not cope. Um, whereas for me, if you sent me to my room, it just meant I'd just go and play with my Lego for a bit. So actually, it didn't work. But um, isolation is used as a punishment because it hurts. It's painful. It is difficult. Um, and it has been one of the biggest challenges of COVID, um, other than of the obvious, which is illness and death. Um, 
And actually, isolation has now been recognised in itself as a killer um, because people are sadly dying because of loneliness and the effects that it has on our mental health and then our physical health. And the truth of it is, as human beings, we are not designed to be alone. We are not designed to be isolated. And that's why it is such a challenge. When I first started thinking about this topic, um, I immediately went to um, uh, something called Myers-Briggs, which is a psychological study um, or a way of understanding people and their personalities. Um, and one of the measures Myers-Briggs uses is to establish as a person where, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Um, and actually, it doesn't teach that you're one or the other. Actually, it's, it teaches that it's a scale and you tend to lie somewhere in between the two. Um, but whether you're an introvert or an extrovert isn't about how you are in terms of being a social person. It's all about where you get your energy from. Do you find being in a social situation tiring or do you actually find it energising? Me personally, I know I'm an introvert. When I go into social situations, I find it an effort, um, which means I have to rest afterwards. Um, whereas others who are extroverts actually find it energising to be in a social situation. Um, and if without that, they, they, be, they become tired be, through being lonely or isolated. Uh, interestingly, Myers-Briggs was one of the things that Cathy and I did when we were first married. Um, we did it as a church in Shrewsbury, and it was a very interesting exercise because me and Cathy came out as complete opposites on the Myers-Briggs assessments, um, which we found hilarious, especially as we were picked on all the way through the day, which were uh, the day conference, because they used us as an example of how different people respond differently to different things. So whereas I'm an introvert, Cathy is definitely an extrovert. Um, and actually the same for me and my brother, whereas I'm an introvert and can cope with being sent to my room because I will just play with Lego, my brother just falls apart because that idea of separation really hurts him. But actually, isolation for whether you're introverted or extroverted um, isn't healthy because even the introverts, after a while, need social interaction, need other people because there's only so much of your own thoughts you can cope with um, before you just escalate into madness, so to speak, but not necessarily. Um, because when I look at this, I think um, that we are humans, are sociable creatures. We need other people. That's why we marry. Um, that's why we go around in groups. That's why we have a church. We are social creatures. Um, and it would be wrong not to think about isolation in terms of theology and what the Bible has to teach us and tell us about being sociable. Well. When I thought and think about this, I've just said that we are, human, as humans, sociable creatures. Well, I believe we get our human nature from God because we are made in God's image. And if, as humans, we are sociable creatures, that means God himself must be a sociable creature. And actually, when you think about things, that must be true because God, he himself, is Trinity. God has himself in the mystery that is Trinity and Trinity theology. He has himself to talk to in that. He is three and one. Um, and I'm not going to mess with my mind right now to talk about Trinity and all that stuff. But he himself is sociable because he is three and one at the same time. But he made us in his image to be sociable probably because he wanted us to interact with. God created the world and humanity, not necessarily to say he was lonely, but because he wanted to be sociable. He wanted us to interact with him, to pray and be there and be in a relationship with him. That is him as a God. But there are other areas in the Bible where I think we can learn from isolation. And the example that came to my mind was Paul, um, which is why we've got a reading from Ephesians. Because Paul himself went through some really quite severe times of isolation. Um, he was put in prison for his faith. He was punished and put in jail, like I said earlier, 
probably in isolation because he stood up for what he believed. Paul knew what it was like to be alone. He knew what it was like to stand as a Christian when all the world around him was against him. But he didn't change. He didn't change his message. He actually stood firm on what he believed and preached the gospel. Isolation is tough and isolation is real, but we are all going to experience it. And our reading from Ephesians, not Luke, who knows what I was thinking earlier, but our reading from Ephesians tells us that actually, as Christians, we are never alone because we are united in our faith. Now, Paul is trying to settle an argument in Ephesians between those who are circumcised and non-circumcised and saying we are united. But actually, that conclusion of being united in faith is same for us here and teaches us that we are united. As a church, we are united together. We are united into Christ. We are part of him and his life and his salvation. Just as he is part of, the, of God in Trinity, we are part of him. It's complicated and it can uh, confuse us at times, but actually sometimes we just need to trust it. We are united, which means we are not alone. We are united with God and therefore with each other. Even if there is not somebody in the church stood next to me, which they are not right now, I'm stood in an empty building, I know that I am united through my faith in Christ with all of you. All of you watching this video, we are united together through our faith. That's what our reading here in Ephesians 2 is telling us. We are one church together, not just St. Luke's or St. Paul's, but the Church of England, the church of the whole world. We are united through our faith in Christ, one church together. So as Christians, what is our response to isolation? How do we respond to what is abundantly around us right now and is so difficult? Well, the first thing I want to say is we need to remember that commandment of love one another. Love your neighbour. And actually, we are keeping apart because of our love for each other. And that sounds counterintuitive, but because of the situation we are in with a virus that is at times deadly, we must stay apart to protect one another. We are loving each other through our physical isolation. And it's harder on some than others, but we need to do it together. And it needs to be a corporate effort, doesn't it? It's, there is no point in half the population isolating and the other half, not because then it won't work. Our corporate response to the virus needs to be a united one of isolation and it will keep it away. That's what we need to do because we love one another but we need to hang on and embrace our unity and our spiritual unity because even if our isolation is physical which we feel we are all feeling spiritually we are united feeling the presence of God with us we need to spend time in prayer and worship because the more we do that, we, the more we sense God's presence. If we are feeling lonely and isolated at home, then I encourage you to pray and worship because that will give you the sense of God with you. And then that will actually push away that sense of isolation. Whether that is spending time in prayer or putting on worship music or listening to hymns or whatever you can do, do what brings you close to God. Feel his presence with you and you will recognise your unity with him and with each other. But also I encourage you again to support one another. Ring each other up. Be sociable in our distance. Just because we physically can't be in the same room as another person doesn't mean we can't be with them. When was the last time you spoke to Ring them. Find out how they are. See what's going on. Just talk. And if you want, pray together. Encourage each other. Be church together. 
support one another. That's what we can do to do. And finally, we need to make an effort. And I've mentioned this before. As a church, we need to make effort to worship together. So whether it's engaging with these videos or joining in with the live stuff on a Sunday morning, engage and join in. But isolation is with us. Isolation is going to be with us for a while. I don't know how long for. But as Christians, we are not alone. Hold on to that truth and pray for one another and hang on to our faith that unites us in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we are not alone. I thank you that you are with us because you unite us. Help us to feel your presence, Lord. Help us to recognize the power and abundance of your spirit in us. Lord, we ask that even though we are physically apart, you set your church on fire. So we are united and supported and loving one another and aware of your presence in us all. So Lord, I pray that you continue to bless us and help us to look forward through this time of isolation to that time when we will be united again with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that in this time of separation, we can come together in prayer, bringing you our problems and our joys. We thank you for the technology that helps people to work from home and stay safe. And yet we recognise the problems that come with working from home. The isolation and lack of camaraderie that we get in the workplace, the chats with our fellow workers and the involvement in one another's lives. Please come and fill those gaps with your love and show us how we can reach out to one another. And we pray for everyone who puts themselves at risk by going to work to serve us in so many ways. The NHS staff, carers, teachers, delivery drivers, postmen, refuse collectors, shop workers, to name but a few. Father, please help us to play our part in keeping these people safe and showing them how much we appreciate and value what they do. Thank you for the technology that enables so many children to carry on with their education. It's amazing what can be achieved, but we know that there are many children who haven't got access to what they need to take advantage of what's on offer. We pray that you will show those in authority the way forward so that all children can have equal opportunities to move forward in their education. We know that many children are struggling with the effects of not being able to go to school, from not being able to meet their friends, not getting enough exercise, not having their normal routine. And so we pray that you will help them all to enjoy what they can do at this difficult time. We thank you for the technology that enables us to meet as a church to worship you whilst our buildings are closed. We know that this situation is far from ideal, and yet we are fortunate to have the means to gather remotely in various ways. Please help us to be aware of those people who would benefit from a phone call or a note to show that we're thinking about them and care about them, that we recognise their need for contact challenge us to meet those needs. So please be at work in us and through us as we wait for the time that we can celebrate your love for us together. We thank you for the technology that helps our health service in such amazing ways, for the successful rollout of the vaccines, for the doctors and the scientists who are working so hard to find ways to beat the virus. Please give them wisdom and understanding in their research. Release the 
resources they need and add your gift of healing to their efforts. Please give them your strength and compassion as they continue their vital work for us all. And finally, we pray for all who are sick, for all who are sad, for all who are worried and anxious. Please reach out with your healing, your comfort and your love to all who are in need. Give them hope and a new sense of peace. Amen. And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is written on his hands, my name is I hope you've enjoyed today's service uh, and I hope it's been a blessing to you. Let's finish with the collect prayer for today. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
So the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.